Hi, I'm Tim. In this video, we'll talk about using rudders or ailerons to turn your RC model airplane, both for building and designing, and discuss what adverse yaw is and how that's important to the RC airplane pilot. Let's get to it. I've designed approximately seven RC model aircraft over the past year to include conversion of five Guilos aircraft to radio control flight. Some of the models have rudder for turn, just three channels with aileron, throttle, and um, elevator. Uh, some of the models have three channels with aileron, elevator, and throttle. Some of the models have four channels with aileron, elevator, throttle, and rudder. I've gotten a lot of questions in the comments sections. How do you decide when to use rudder only to turn an airplane versus ailerons? What's the decision point using one or the other? And I'd like to go into some more detail on that topic. Throughout this video, I'll use this little training aid that I made of an airplane. It has ailerons, uh, rudder. There's no elevator because the uh, elevator is not important for turning. I'll talk about normal turns, turns with just rudder, turns with just elevator, coordinated turns, and give a good discussion with this on what adverse yaw is and how you can um, counter it. So again, this is just a simple little thing that I built. You've got a bar here so the ailerons go back and forth, and then I can place the rudder. So let's talk about a normal turn for an airplane, how an airplane turns. What will happen is if the pilot, um, in this case, wants to turn to the left, what will happen is with the stick on your radio control transmitter, the control wheel and the aircraft, they'll bank the aircraft into the direction of the turn. So what will happen is this aileron will go down, this aileron will go left. When that occurs, when this aileron goes down, the effect of the aileron going down is, is it increases the uh, camber of the airfoil with a resulting increase in lift. Tied into that lift is induced drag, which is drag produced by lift. So even though the increased lift of the aileron causes this wing to go up to start the turn, there is also drag from the aileron going down. What that means is as the airplane turns, there's a slight tendency to the nose to turn away from the turn. What happens is you add rudder to have a coordinated turn with the ailerons set like this. Once you get into the turn, the idea is to neutralize the ailerons so you're not continuing the bank and the rudder as necessary to keep it coordinated. For real pilots, we have what's called a turn and bank indicator. I'll put a picture of that up here. You just keep the ball centered. That will tell you exactly how much rudder you need. Visualization with models, you'll just have to judge that it looks like a smooth turn to have the pr appropriate amount of rudder for that turn. So the question has come up, can you turn the model with rudder only? Obviously the answer is yes, because there's thousands of models that fly with rudder only. An example is the Aranka Champ, the uh, Guilo's conversion. This has just rudder, elevator, there are no ailerons on here. And even very successful ready-to-fly models like this Radian, it has elevator rudder. There are no ailerons on this model. So rudder only um, is an effective way to turn. Look at the model. What will happen is you'll have a sloppy turn is what happens. But depending on the configuration of the aircraft, you can get away with the sloppy turns. So let's assume we have a rudder only model. There are no ailerons. So we'll leave these neutral. If you put in full rudder, what's going to happen is the nose of the airplane, in this case the rudder is indicating a left turn, will eventually yaw around due to the rudder and eventually as it starts moving in that direction the outer wing is a little bit faster, creates a little bit more lift with dihedral, it'll start to bank and you'll have a turn, but it'll be a very sloppy what we call a skidding turn, literally skidding to the outside until you get the bank and get into the turn. However, Rudder-only flight has its advantages. In the early days of radio control flight in the 50s, when there was just single-channel equipment, all you had was rudder. And so what would happen is you'd build an airplane that was suitable for rudder-only control. It had to be a fairly stable design. It was almost always a high-wing design with a lot of dihedral. It could even have polyhedral, where you had dihedral going out to here, then more up to here. All this makes for a very stable model. So when you skid it into a turn, it will go to the bank fairly quickly. In the case of smaller models, like this Wheels Aronka, it's just 
ease of construction, the rudder is much easier to install than ailerons in this wing, and weight of consideration because the aileron structure would add weight to the aircraft. So because this is a fairly stable design, high wing, some dihedral, it lends itself to rudder-only flight. If you were to have rudder-only flight for a aerobatic low wing model, say a World War II fighter, the rudder just wouldn't be effective enough to keep the wings level due to the maneuverability of the aircraft, which is going to lead to our second discussion on the use of ailerons. The next question that will come up, can you turn a model or model or even an aircraft with ailerons only? And the answer is yes, you can. But like with a rudder where you have a sloppy skidding turn, if you elect to turn with ailerons only, not use the rudder, let's assume a turn to the left, you just put in full ailerons for a model, what will happen is it'll bank over, but there's, the nose is not going to turn initially. The airplane with its wing up from this aileron will start to slip into the turn and eventually it'll get into the turn, but it'll be a fairly not precise sloppy turn to get in there. You'll have to apply some back elevator to keep it level. That is what you can do. So the thing is, there are many models that fly very well using ailerons only for turns. I'd say most modelers you get kind of lazy because you can turn with the ailerons and the model seems to go around fine. It's still a little bit of a sloppy slipping turn. It is very evident when you use ailerons only for a high wing model like the Aronka or a trainer versus a fast maneuverable model. And so it's just the way the airplanes are built. The faster, more maneuverable models uh, can turn with ailerons only. This is the Aviator, one of my plans built models, obviously a fairly uh, sporty aerobatic flyer. Notice we have quite large strip ailerons for lateral control. You have to have this with this model. I do not believe this model would be flyable with rudder only uh, for the uh, turn control. So again, depends on the type of the model, whether or not you need the ailerons or the rudder. Can I turn this with ailerons only? Yes, I can. It's fast enough. I get away with it, but the rudder is there. The coordinated turns and the other advantage of the rudder on a model like that is it allows for steering on the ground. Let's talk now about adverse yaw, what that is and how we can uh, deal with it as RC pilots. It'll be very important because adverse yaw can really affect the flying of a certain class of models. So what happens with all airplanes is when you turn with the ailerons, let's assume a left turn of this nature with the aileron down, as we described Increased lift on this side, it lifts up that wing. Because of the drag, it'll have the nose turn a little bit away from the turn, but the rudder coordinates it and brings it around to a nice smooth turn. Let's say that you didn't use the rudder, uh, it's on the uh, left stick for your model, you just put in ailerons to turn. If a model is susceptible to adverse yaw, when you put in this, the, this uh, down elevator to lift the wing, depending how the model is set up, the down elevator can actually create enough drag, instead of going this way, it'll drag the nose to the opposite direction of the turn, even though the wing is coming up, the nose will turn away. And it can be bad enough that you could put in a full left-hand turn and the model actually turns to the right. There's a very interesting case of the um, very well-known English aircraft, uh, model aircraft designer Gordon Whitehead, he built an Avro 504K as a World War II trainer biplane. I'll put a picture up here. Aircraft that are lightweight, have a lot of ailerons, low powered, fly slow, are very susceptible to adverse yaw. So the Avro 501K, like virtually all of the World War I bycraft, fit those criteria. In the case of the 504, it had four ailerons, two in the top wing, two in the bottom wing, slow flight. So what would happen is when both of the ailerons were down in this case. There was enough drag that Gordon could put down the elevator. He could actually do a full 360 degree turn in the opposite direction, of course, keeping the rudder neutral from adverse yaw. Now, he understood this, what was going on. The way to fix adverse yaw is absolutely simple. You just have coordinated rudder, so when that nose starts going opposite the direction of the turn, the rudder keeps it coordinated again with the uh, stick and um, ball instrument that I showed you before into a smooth turn. So lightweight models, you have to have the coordinated turns. Basically all World War I fighters, it's very important to know that. Otherwise, you will think you're going left, the model goes right, and it's going to really confuse you. 
Back to our original question, should you use rudder only for turns or ailerons? The answer is it depends. If you have a relatively stable model, a Piper Cub, an Aronka Champ, a high wing trainer, it should do just fine with rudder only flight. Make sure you have enough rudder area for the turns and that the model is inherently stable, stable. So if there is a little bit of adverse yaw, it'll eventually work itself out on the turn, even though it'll be a little bit of a skidding turn. If there's any doubt as to the maneuverability of the model or the need for precision control of your banks for a faster model, like a World War II fighter, ailerons are almost going to be required for something like that. Many of my models are three-channel models. For example, this um, version of the Guilos Hellcat is a pretty big model. It's one of their giant scale series. This is a three-channel model. I've got elevator, ailerons, and throttle. There is no rudder on this model, but the ailerons are out here. They have plenty of movement. They are absolutely suitable to keep the wings level at slower flights during takeoff and on landing. I'm not sure I could fly this airplane on rudder only. Uh, the ailerons are absolutely necessary for flight. Could I add a fourth channel for rudder? Yes, I could. I, again, this is just a prototype, an experiment. I built it without any landing gear, so there's really no need for ground steering because it just lands on the ground. But this is an example of an aileron uh, in a, in a uh, model. A three-channel aircraft is my 1912 Blackburn monoplane. This has no ailerons. It has rudder, elevator, and throttle control. The real plane in 1912 did not have any ailerons. Right? They warped the wings to affect the bank control. It was really minimal control. Even today, when the full-scale Blackburns fly, it's on a calm day. They're, they're almost uncontrollable compared to what we're used to today. But with about 45-degree throw left or right of the rudder, it turns very well. Again, this is a lightweight, light wing loading, low powered airplane. It flies, the model flies like the real one. This is absolutely fine for three channel control. I think if I were to put ailerons on there, due to the inherent uh, stability of the aircraft, the adverse yaw would be extreme on this. There's really no need to have it. The rudder works just fine for the Blackburn. Thank you for joining me in this video. Uh, it's been a discussion of rudder only, um, the need for ailerons, and adverse yaw. It's good to know these things because you could fly a model someday, say the World War I fighter, and not understand adverse yaw. You have an idea what's going on. And as always, it's good to practice coordinated flight. Every time you turn and you put in the ailerons, try putting in a little bit of rudder. It's just good pilot technique. It'll just make you a better pilot and the planes will fly better.